there's entire chunks of the world, including the deep ocean, that are yet to be explored, you know, and I know beyond any doubt that we will uncover all new large species in the deep sea as this technology continues to advance. First thing I want to ask you was, uh, you know, in watching Alien Sharks, you, you went through a lot of steps and a lot of places to find a, a seven gill. You particularly famously hunt for like extinct species or species close to extinction. How did this hunt stack up to some of your other expeditions in terms of like length and or difficulty? It was definitely less difficult than others. And especially because, you know, with uh, Extinct or Alive and some of the other stuff I do looking for extinct species, the journey is often the destination because the likelihood of us finding something is always really, really slim, even though we have been successful, you know, quite a number of times now. This one, uh, you know, I think the destination was always finding the seven gill. So we knew we had to do it. And I, I knew that they were still there. But what was unlikely was finding them in a man-made harbor. I don't think that was ever at the top of our consideration going into this. So it was very unique. Um, but as far as a stress meter goes, it was severely reduced compared to some of the stuff we do. I mean, we slept in, you know, hotels every night. And we were out on the boat during the day. So it was just uh, a lot easier than some of our month long missions, sleeping in a hammock deep in the Amazon, deep in the African bush. This was uh, this was a lot easier, but just as fun to showcase. Not only do you kind of highlight the seven gill, there's all these other sharks like pajama shark, the wedge fish. Uh, what made you kind of want to focus in on these? And did you have a personal favorite to work with or, or check out? Well, first of all, you know, when you think about shark week, you think of the big iconic animals, right? The the white sharks and the hammerheads and the tiger sharks. And my thing, you know, no matter what the show is, is I always love the opportunity to give the underrepresented organisms the spotlight. And so I really, really enjoy being able to find what I think are much cooler or animals and showcase them and let the world fall in love with them. So when Alien Sharks was rebooted and we took over that franchise, it's so exciting to be able to do what is pretty much just a show and tell of unique animals, right? And that's a, that's a really cool opportunity. So while Seven Gills were always the mission focus, we always had this, this option to show everything else that I was really, really excited about. And for me, um, I think two that really stay, it's, it's hard because there's a, I really enjoyed all of it. Two things that really stand out. One was catching the wedge fish seemed pretty much impossible. Like we actually set out early to do that and did that with a really reduced crew because we thought odds are this will never catch. It'll never make the show. So when we actually reeled one in, that was very exciting. And uh, number two, I think, and probably hands down, my favorite moment was when we were underwater with those striped pajama sharks and uh, they had just eaten the crayfish and they were all revved up and they started coming into me for like shark massages and I'm there like stimulating their ampullae and rolling them over and a different one's like nuzzling in my armpit and another one's at the back of my neck and I'm like I'll get to you in a minute you know like uh that I really love that like I've never had so much affection from a shark before and I I absolutely fell in love with that shark I got home and I told my wife that one day when I make my my billions of dollars in conservation as realistic as that is I'll have a, a swim in shark tank filled with those guys so I can just hop in there and cuddle sharks anytime I feel like it so yeah I love that that was my favorite moment and seeing the mating because I don't think that's ever been recorded before that was huge that whole sequence was amazing you speaking of things not recorded you also put a camera very very deep in the ocean I think got a lot of unique footage that way I mean what what is the feeling for you of knowing that you're one of the first people to to see something or at least capture something? That's got to be amazing. Well, I think I'm jaded now, Owen, because I've done <laughs> it so many times, and that's not that's a humble brag. But you know, it's like we it, it 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 never gets old when you get to see something for the first time, the first time human beings have ever seen a piece of habitat, a piece of ocean, a, a, a new animal, a new organism. It's an incredible experience, and. Uh, we were very fortunate in Alien Sharks that Christine De Silva came and brought her specialized brubs, uh, which are those baited remote underwater video devices that we put down thousands and thousands of feet. And, uh, you know, undeniably the first human beings ever to see that part of the ocean, which is a pretty cool thing to think about. You know, you're seeing a piece of the seafloor 
that no human has ever laid eyes on before, that only new technology is allowing us to unlock. And then seeing the organisms that are existing down there was neat. And that's, uh, I really can't take any credit for that. That was all Christine and her tools. And I was allowed to sort of just, you know, piggyback on her research, which was really cool. Do you have a sense of how difficult it is? Because like for someone like me, who's not in the field, it's easy to imagine that scientists have explored everything. Um, or like, you know, I know that's like an insane thing to say, but like, how difficult is it to find, to get that kind of new footage to find something new? I mean, how often is this happening for you? It's becoming increasingly difficult because, you know, where there's more and more people every year and we're studying more and more things and uh, our understanding of the world in general has become broad. You know, you, you, can't even think of the last time a large new species was discovered. You know, I think the Saula in 95 might have been the last one. So the time has gone by, right? And um, it's becoming increasingly difficult. But I think two things. First of all, most scientists are incredibly arrogant and like to let everybody think that they know everything. And so if you if you go by, if you believe that, then you lack the creativity to go out and find and study and learn new stuff. And so that's what we do is, I think if you're able to be very dynamic and creative, that there is still sort of a limitless potential of seeing new things and learning new stuff. And I mean, look, there's entire chunks of the world, including the deep ocean, that are yet to be explored, you know, and I know beyond any doubt that we will uncover all new large species in the deep sea as this technology continues to advance. I remember seeing a TikTok of yours, uh, of maybe <laughs> last or something. I know, but you were very excited about a company, Colossal, trying to de-extinct the the thylacine. Uh, right. I that's amazing. I'm curious. Do you have thoughts on how viable kind of de-extinction is going to be in the future with with other species as well? Like, is this something you think about or dream about? Oh, and you put me on the spot here, buddy, and I like it. Um, <laughs> Look, I, I'm a con- I don't want to I don't want to sugarcoat it. So take my opinion however you like. I'm a conservation advisor for Colossal, which means I work for them now and I help draw up their conservation plans, not just for animals that are being de-extincted, but for existing species. And uh, I can't say too much, but you're going to want to stay tuned at the end of this year because there's a very big announcement coming out, and that will prove the viability of this de-extinction work. And it's very, very, very exciting. You know, it's exciting. Because what it does is it allows us as human beings to right our wrongs. You know, you don't see Colossal trying to build Jurassic Park. What you see is them using this incredible bioscience and technology to uh, repair ecosystems that we have damaged by removing keystone species, right? Putting a thylacine back into Tasmania, dodo back into Mauritius, mammoths back into the Arctic tundra because human beings led to their demise, right? And without those animals, well, we might look at it and go, oh, this ecosystem's great. It's actually not. It's fragmented and, and, and damaged. And putting these animals back will lead to uh, major pieces of that repair. And uh, it's really, really exciting. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, My pleasure. I, yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's all I got for you. But yeah, man, I, I really appreciate it. It's crazy. Stay tuned, though. And it's going to be cool. You and everybody else is going to want to talk about this in November. I promise you. It's going to be really exciting what, what we are, we're announcing. <laughs> that's amazing. That's that's what my birthday is. I'll, I'll keep there it. There you go. Perfect. Thank you awesome. very much for the gift. Thanks, buddy. <laughs>